Hallelujah. Today, we want to learn about music in the house of the Lord. Now, when we think about music, we, we always know it's talking about dancing, talking about shouting, talking about jumping, talking about clapping, talking about celebration. When we think about music, especially in the house of the Lord, People think about uh, Psalms, uh, scriptures in Psalms. Like when you read Psalms 150, verse 4, verse 1, let's say verse 1 to 6. I'm going to read from the King James. It says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of, of the trumpet, praise him with the sanctuary and harp. Praise, the, praise Him with the timbrels and with dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments or organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise, praise Him upon high-sounding cymbals. Uh, verse 6 says, Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. So we read all the books of Psalms. You will see everything. Psalm is a song. In other words, Psalms are songs. Psalm 149, verse, verse, verse 4. Psalm 149, verse, verse 3, it says, it says, I'm reading from here in King James again. It says, let, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them, pray, let them sing praises unto him in the trembles and harps. Now, unless you understand what praise is, you will not understand what we are trying to teach today. today. Amen. So most of the books that are in Psalms are written by King David. Amen. Now, when you also talk about praises in the house of the Lord, people will tell you David danced and his clothes was torn. David danced and his wife despised him. And his wife never gave birth because he was despising the servant of the Lord who was dancing before his God. When you talk about praises or you talk about dancing, you talk about music in the house of the Lord, People will tell you Paul and Silas sang praises unto the Lord. And, 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 and the Bible says that their, their chains were broken. The foundation of the, the, the house that they were in, the prison house, were broken. They were shaken. And the chains that were in their hands were loose. They were broken. And the doors opened by itself. And they will tell you praise as power. power. They will tell you uh, uh, music as some power. Music can deliver, music can save, music can, can do great things. So everybody that, have do, that does music in the house of the Lord, they have got some backup of what they're doing. Now let me introduce you something small now. What is music? Music is a way that the world, is a way that the world uses, is something that the world uses, is a way of celebration, is a, is a sign of happiness. Amen. Music has been there before, uh, before, uh, before the church was actually built. Hallelujah. So you see that music is a business of itself. Because now there's no disco hall without uh, a speaker and a radio that's making noise, that people are dancing. There is no drinking joint without music in it. Music is used also by the, the people, the traditional people, by traditions, to appease God. Amen. The gods of this world, they used to appease them. Amen. And we know that music cannot be done with the help of a music instrument. When you go to school, you will see the instrument they use, the xylophone, the, the, the local instrument that is made here. They are there. Long, long time before the, this type of music, the speakers and the microphones were introduced. We see that people were beating their chest with their hands. They were, they were beating their chest with their hands and they're using their footsteps, their foot marks, the sound of their foot, so that they, they, they make some sound and they dance over those. But then it continued to graduate slowly, slowly. It graduated to beating jerrycans. It graduated to uh, having the music with dynam. You use bicycle to generate power. We are then you do for disco hall. It also graduated now to a, to a system, a modern system that we have today. But I tell, you, I tell you something, the music is even still graduating. 
We are still going to the, from computer. We are moving to Bluetooth. We are moving to cloud. You call it cloud music. We are moving to memory card. With these are how music is moving. Now this this advancement in technology were not there in the time of Jesus Christ. This advancement of technology they were not there at the time of Moses, the time of David, the time of that. People used the local music uh, instrument to to appreciate um, to, to 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 make some nice music. Amen. Now another thing I want to understand as I'm introducing is that. Everything that a man does on this earth, everything that human being does on the earth, whatever they do, have got its own music. Hallelujah! For example, the funerals they have in my in my tribe, we have funeral songs. We also have evil songs, songs that are sung by witch doctors, songs that are sung when they are pleasing demons, when they are pleasing demons. When they're making, they're ordaining somebody to be a witch doctor. These are songs. They sing songs. Amen. And they, they, those demons come and sing them. Amen. And some of those songs have got the names of the demons that they, they worship. The demons that they're singing to. They have those names. In most of the riddles that we do, that we teach our young children, we even sing those songs unaware. But not knowing that we are singing and appeasing the devil of, the, of our father's house. The demons, the gods of our father's house. So there are also songs that are sung in war. Amen. In my tradition, we have a song, we have a, a, a dance which is called Otole. So these are sung in war. At the time of war, when you hear people singing, you know that's a bad is a bad the, the, it's, it is it is a wild situation. Amen. We also have kingdom songs, songs that are sung at the palace, songs that are sung at Kabaka's home, at the palace's home. So these are kingdom songs. They also dance it there. Amen. We still also have, I told you, everything that everything that man does, I've, I've got his own song. We also have love songs. And these love songs are what is what the people of this world are promoting a lot. We have people in this world that we call love birds. For example, we have Celine Dion, we have Rihanna, we have all these other people, they, they do love songs. Amen. And they know that they are doing these love songs too. And these love songs are used, they use it for money. They are used by people who are making, people who are, who are in love so that they can use it to appease or maybe to 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 make their loved ones happy amen with the dedications hallelujah amen then we have also marriage songs they, they are also there hallelujah so everything that us that the human being does in this world i've got a music that is attached to it amen hallelujah and then when it comes to the house of the lord god also has music that is attached to him. There are songs that are sung for God. There are songs that are that are that are sung for God. They are sung. Uh, they are just attached to God only. Amen. There are scriptural songs that that, that when you sing them, uh, God, God is happy. In fact, when you when we are going to see where angels of God are singing before the Lord God Almighty. Amen. But when it comes to the house of the Lord, Amen. When it comes to the house of the Lord. Remember, I'm talking about music. I'm not talking about singing. Hallelujah. Because when I'm talking about music, then I'm going to talk about dancing. I'm going to talk about the radios. I'm going to, about to, talk, I'm going to talk about the noise, the celebration, the style, the, the dressing, the dress code, and all these things. So when you come to the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord should be an hospital of, of sinners. Amen. Should be a hospital for sinners. A place where sinner comes to get healing. A place where broken hearted comes to get healing. The church should be a, a deliverance ground. A place where deliverance takes place. In fact, in Obadiah, Obadiah, o Obadiah, chapter 1 verse 17, it says, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Amen. Then he says, there shall be holiness. Those two things. And the house of Jacob shall possess that position. So a place of deliverance is also a place of holiness. So that means the church is supposed to be a holy ground, a place where people come to mourn for their sin, a place where people come to search their hearts and see if there is something that has made them not right with God and they correct them. A place where people come and see, they come and talk to God and say, we are children of Adam. We are children that are supposed to be meant for hell. But because you made your son to die for us, we are here. 
a place where we come boldly before the throne of grace to ask for mercy, to ask for grace in the time of need. In other words, a church is not a place of celebration. Hallelujah. It is a place where people are corrected. It is a place where people are corrected, people are, are trained, people are taught, people are admonished. Hallelujah. So when you talk about a church, we are, talking up, we are not talking about a place of celebration. When we want to talk about celebration, we want to talk about something that makes us happy, praise the living God. Then we have to go for parties. We have to go for birthday parties. We have to go for mar marriage celebrations. We have to go maybe for wedding. Those are places where there are celebrations. But when it comes to God, and when it comes to the church, the holy ground, the holy temple, amen, then that should be a place where the fear of the Lord is mentioned. A place where we think about our holiness, we think about our righteousness, we think about our faith, we think about how good God has, how good God has been to us. Amen. Now I'm going to show you in scripture that when people come before the Lord, amen, and they have an encounter with God, it doesn't lead to enjoyment. Hallelujah. Amen. When people encounter God, when people encounter the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the experience is not celebration. The experience is not singing. The experience is always hopeful. The Bible says hopeful. The experience is always alarming. Amen. Remember, an holy God is coming to meet a sinful people. They are going to meet in one place, but their meeting is united by Christ. So it is the blood of Jesus Christ that has a peace, that made God to be at peace with us. And each time we come before God, we come hiding under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But even when you have the blood of Jesus Christ upon your forehead, because you are now born again, you, anything that you do before God that still makes you a sinner will make God, which is holy, not to be at peace with you. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, we see the experience of Isaiah. Remember in chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Isaiah is rebuking the children of Israel. He's talking as if he's a God. He's saying, you know, God is telling me, God is telling me you, are, you, have, you have failed to worship me, you have failed to obey me, you have become wicked people. So Isaiah was telling people about the, their sin in Isaiah chapter 1. Up to chapter 5, Isaiah was talking about how God was telling the children of Israel they are sin and how they should return to God. But then in verse 6, Isaiah now himself, he met the Lord. Now meeting the Lord does not mean he went to heaven, but he saw God sitting on his throne in a vision. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. I'm reading here in King James. So it's so good in the vision, chapter 6, verse 1. I'm going to read up to up to uh, verse 5. 6 1 it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, I and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims, each, each one had six wings, with, with twine he covered his face, and with twine he covered his feet, and with twine he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of us. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now you can see the cry in heaven. Holy, holy, holy eh, is the Lord of us. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 6. Verse, verse 4. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. That cried. And the others filled with smoke. Verse, verse 5. Smoke. Verse 5. And I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, even the Lord of us. Now, see, when Isaiah saw the Lord, when he saw the Lord, praise the living God, as in a vision, the Bible is telling us that Isaiah, instead of celebrating and dancing, the way people say, we saw Jesus, eh? you see people are in WhatsApp, people are posting pictures that they saw Jesus somewhere. My friend, if you see Jesus now, the Bible says you will, you, and the whole earth will mourn. Hallelujah. The whole earth will mourn. So what am I saying? Isaiah saw the Lord in a vision. But then what did he say? He said, woe is me. 
Hallelujah. The word woe is me means I am in trouble because my I have seen the Lord. So you can see that an experience or an encounter with the Lord does not lead to celebration. When Paul encountered Jesus in Acts chapter 9, the Bible says, the, by, by the reason of the brightness of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the brightness shining of Jesus Christ towards Paul, he was blind for three days. Hallelujah. He was blind for three days. And then Ananias came and heal him from his blindness and baptize him and commission him to go and preach to the Gentiles. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter, let's read another one. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 16 and 18. Daniel chapter 10, verse 16 and 18. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 10, verse 16 and 18. I'm going to read 16 says, verse King James again. And behold, one like the sim one like the similitude of the Son of Man, men, touched my lip. Then I opened my mouth and spared and said unto him that stood before me, O my God, my, by the vision my sorrow had turned upon me, and I have restrained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this, with this my Lord? For as for me, straight away there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. So also Daniel, when he saw the vision of the Lord, and he saw somebody like the Son of Man, that is Christ, Jesus Christ. Amen. And he saw him. The, by because of that vision, the Bible is saying there was no strength in the life of Daniel. And there was no breath in his life. It is, uh, it is in verse 18. Amen. Verse 16. It is in verse 17 that they strengthened him. They touched him. And then strength came back to him. So, when we have the music, when we go before the Lord in music, the system that we have today, and by, by bad luck, I'm saying bad luck, because I know what the presence of God is. By bad luck, God one day appears in the sanctuary or in the church where we are. We can never celebrate. We will only see our sin. We will see our trouble because an only God appearing. The way you look, the way you dress, the way you're doing, how you're doing your things, you will see your trouble. In Luke chapter 5, verse 8, maybe they'll give you that last example. I'm trying to explain to you that everybody that have got an encounter with the Lord, amen, they did not, that encounter did, do, will never end in, in, in happiness. It will never end in dancing. It will never end in clapping hands. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 5, verse 8, I read verse 8, it says, and when Simon Peter saw it, he fell at Jesus' feet, Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So even Peter himself, when Jesus told him, Come, leave fishing, I will make you fishers of men. After encountering Jesus Christ, what did Peter see? He saw his sin. He said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Now, God is looking for those who are saying, I am not worthy. God is not looking for those who are saying, celebrate Christ, celebrate Jesus, celebrate him, celebrate what? Hallelujah. <clears throat> God is looking for those who are not worthy, who are saying, I am not worthy. Depart from me. I know I'm a sinner. Hallelujah. So everybody that has got encounter with the Lord, all of them, the encounter never ended in, in happiness. The encounter never ended in music and dance and drama. No. The encounter ended in tears. Tears of repentance. Tears of joy. Tears of seeing the Lord. Strength lost in your life. You don't have anything. You just lament your problem. That is the encounter with the Lord. Amen. Now, who introduced music in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. We see a man, there's a man who introduced music in the house of the Lord. We have David. David is the one that introduced music in the house of the Lord. We have him. I'm going to show you how he introduced music in the house of the Lord. Praise the living God. Amen. David introduced music in the house of the Lord. Now, David was a king. Remember, he was a king. He was not a priest. He was not a judge. Hallelujah. The way God was using the servants of his servants in the Old Testament, a priest is somebody that stands between God and his children. It's somebody who will do sacrifices, who will be the only one entering in the sanctuary, in the church. 
is the, is the only one that is going to uh, sacrifice and make atonement on behalf of the people towards God. The king, like David, his work is to defend the territories of Israel, to fight. The, David started by fighting Goliath. So every king that was selected in Egypt would be a man of war. Hallelujah. Then the prophets would be the mouthpiece of God, somebody that God speaks using. God will speak using the prophet to his children. Now, how did music come? David did not introduce music in the house of the Lord. He only introduced music to Israel as a kingdom. Amen. Let's look at the scriptures because we have to teach you the scriptures. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. I'm going to read verse 14 to 23. I love this. When you have questions, please, you can just... Okay, chapter 6, chapter, chapter, chapter 16, verse 14. It says, But the Spirit of God departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now, question number one. How can the evil spirit come from the Lord? Those are principalities and powers that God uses them to accomplish His purpose or to punish those who are not doing or not keeping his commandments and principalities you can't cast them out by saying in jesus name get out they will tell you amen so this is an experience with saul that the, the, the real spirit of god departed from him but then another spirit from god because principalities are servants of god although satan is trying to use them but they are not good spirits some of them are good spirits. Some of them are evil spirits. But they are, they are princes of a province. They are princes, they are rulers, they are authorities over different areas. So this is a principality that was ruling in, Egypt, in, 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 in the kingdom of South. So when the spirit of God left him, remember nobody, you have to have some spirit in you. You can't stay alone. So in the absence of the spirit of God is the presence of the devil. So the evil spirit troubled him. Then verse 15. I will talk about principalities in our next sermon. Don't worry. Verse 15. And Saul, and Saul saw and said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God trouble you. Verse 16. Let, let our Lord now, I command thy servant. Let our Lord now command thy servant. Sorry about that. Somebody just called him. Let our Lord now command let our Lord now command thy servant which are before thee to seek out a man who is a cunning player, a player on the harp. Amen. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him unto me. Then answered one of his one of his servants and said, "Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Be the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty a, a mighty valiant man, a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him." Amen. Verse nineteen. Wherefore Saul sent messengers to unto Jesse. And said, Send me David thy son, which is which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with the bread, and a bottle of wine, and a kid, and sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his arm bearers. And Saul sent unto Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. Verse 23, and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand, and Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Now, if you don't read this verse very well, I tell you something, you will mess up here. This is the place where thou the Christ is the master. Amen? So if you don't read these verses very well, you will think, this, the music that David was playing was casting out the demons from, or the evil spirit from Saul. 
But my question is, how can David, a servant of God, cast out a demon or an evil spirit put by God? It's not possible. How can you say, I command you, every spirit of darkness put by God in the name, in the life of this person, depart, which name are you going to use? Because if it is God who has put the evil spirit on soul because of disobedience, it is also Jesus, because it's the same yesterday, today, and forever, who put the evil spirit. That means you can't say, in the name of Jesus, get out. The evil spirit will tell you, we know. Jesus, we know. Even God, we are aware. Who are you? Hallelujah. So, what happened? Why was the evil spirit living? Hallelujah. Why was the evil spirit living? Because the evil spirit, when David plays the app, when he plays the instrument, and the evil spirit is departing, it is not living because there is the Holy Spirit in what David is trying to pray, no, to play. It's not living because there is power in what David is trying to play. No, it's living because it's coming to dance at the music of David. Hallelujah. Just like when witch doctors begin to play music, they begin to sing their things. All the demons in the person that they're trying to help will begin to jump out and begin to dance with the goats in their hands, with chicken in their hands. <coughs> so the evil spirit were not coming out of Saul, praise the living God, because of the power in the music. No. Why? Because every time they will, David will come and praise it, sing. They will come and sing and play instrument. Hallelujah. The evil spirit will come and dance. Then when David leaves, evil spirit goes back to Saul. <coughs> That's why Saul said, let David now stay before me forever because I uh, I need it. In the evening, David, David will come and play. Evil spirit will come to jump and praise and go away. In the night, he will come and play. Evil spirit. So if you don't see that well, you will not believe it. <coughs> Amen. So, music instrument doesn't cast out demons, doesn't remove evil spirit. In fact, it will only increase the spirit. The spirit as, at which people dance in the discord is not the spirit of God. No, it's not the spirit of God. Amen. Well, we were casting out a demon, and, and the demon told us, Pastor, we dance with you here every day. <coughs> and I said, Wow. I said, is, is it, We may dance more if our, one, of, one of us is the one holding the microphone. There's a spirit of the devil inside dancing, inside system. Why? Because if keyboard keep quiet, people will not dance. People are dancing keyboard. There's an evil spirit in the, in the music we are dancing today. Because if you will never see people sleeping during time of praise and dancing. But when it comes to the word of God, everybody is sleeping. There's that spirit of the devil in there, in that place. It will never attack. The devil will never attack praise. The devil fear worship. The devil fear the word of God. The devil fear prayers. So when you begin to sing, you begin to put music. Especially now you bring gospel music. This one that they're singing today. You find somebody is an artist. is playing gospel, but he is also playing the worldly song. It's better if somebody is playing the gospel, he has already left the worldly song forever and he has jumped to the gospel, it's better. But somebody who sing one gospel, go back and sing one worldly, come back and sing one gospel. Now when you introduce that song in the church and you play it very well, demons will arise to praise God. Amen. And when they praise their God finish, they go back. So demons love to dance. Remember, Satan was standing before the Lord. He was still Lucifer. He was singing and praising to God. So if you talk about music, the first word that should come to your mind is the devil. Because his role in heaven was singing. So now, if, if you are not careful, Satan will be the one dancing and praising and bringing music. <coughs> For you, you do what you do is the preaching. <coughs> 
You will excuse me with this cough. Amen. What you do is the preaching, but then Satan will be the one to dance for you. Because he was the one that is having what? That was in charge of music. So how do we now cast out the devils? You must have the Holy Spirit. Because once you don't have the Holy Spirit, that evil spirit must possess you. Amen. So that is what I'm because light and darkness they don't meet. So once there's a spirit of God, evil spirit can't stay. Once there's, once there's no spirit of God, then there must be an evil spirit in that person. Did music, did that what did David introduce that music in the church? No. It was at the a palace. It was at the palace of King Saul. That was not in the church. Was David singing the Lord's song? No. Because it's not written anywhere in the Bible that he was singing the Lord's song. The Bible said he was a cunning, he was a good player of a system. So maybe when he was he's shepherding the shepherding the, the flocks or the sheep of Jesse, his father, he would be using maybe some of his time to sit and wait for them as they're taking water, they're eating, he'll be playing instrument, his own instrument to the Lord. Amen. The music were not taken to the church. The music were taken to the palace. Praise the living God. They, why? Why? Because the church was a secret place. In fact, not even a, a sacred, you know, the, the, the school we call sacred art. A sacred place, a place of holiness. You know that the church was divided by three. The outer place, which are for members. The holy place, which are for the Levites only, then the holy of holies, or the most holy place, which is only for one place, Aaron and Aaron only and his sons. And once Aaron is entering the most holy place, especially that is the altar, that's the altar where we dance, that's the altar where we put reduce music system. When Aaron is entering in that altar, the Bible says they will tie a bell in his leg. So that if by mistake he does any mistake in that altar and God kills him, they will pull him by that rope because no one else was allowed to enter into that holy place without what except Aaron the high priest. David himself did not have the opportunity to enter in the church because the church was belonging to the Aaron that's the their time Aaron the high priest and the Levites, and David was an ordinary person from the house of Judah, so he could not enter the church. Let me show you, maybe you think I'm lying. Let me show you one of the kings, because kings are not supposed to enter the church. One of the kings who tried to force himself to become a, to become a priest, to enter in the, in the holy place, to the, uh, and then what happened to him? Second Chronicles 26. Second Chronicles 26. Second Chronicles chapter 26. Amen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 26, we are going to read from verse 16 to 20. 26, verse 16 to 20. 26 says, verse 16 says, But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went out into the temple of the Lord to burn incense unto the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with his four score priests of the Lord, that were valiant men. And they withstood as Uzziah the king. And he said unto him, It is, but it is not lawful. It is, it is, but it, it, is but it is pertained. Okay. It appertained not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense into the house, into, unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary. For thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for, for thine honor from the, for, from the Lord. Then Uzziah was wroth, and had a, had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priest, leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord, for before, from beside the, the incense altar. And as Isaiah the chief priest and all the priests took, looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous from his forehead, and they thrust him out of from hence. Yah himself asked also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was leper, was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in the separated house.
being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham, his son, was over the, uh, the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now listen, Uzziah the king, who, just like King David, he entered the house of the Lord and went to do the work of the priest, which was not lawful for him to do it. And the priest came to him. Hallelujah. And when the priest came, all the priests, Azariah, the chief priest, and other Levites, the priest came to him and told him, get out of this house now. You are not supposed to do this. these things are for Aaron and his sons. Go away. You, you are looking for trouble before the Lord. Then he was very angry with the high priest for saying that because he think he is a king and he wants to what? To be a priest also. Remember, that is kingdom united with the church. Hallelujah. Kingdom united with the church. The Rom, Rom, Romans and the, and the church coming together to form one union so that the end time can come. So this thing has been happening before. So Uzziah, King Uzziah, he wanted to combine the state and what? The church together, which God did not want it at that time. Amen. He was an antichrist that time. He wanted to be an antichrist. So when he got angry, he even wanted to kill the priest. Then the Bible said, leprosy. Leprosy came and struck him in his forehead. And he died as a leper. Amen. This tells you that kings like David were not supposed to enter the church. Amen. They were not supposed to enter the church. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's what I want you to understand. Even David himself, hallelujah, when he wants to talk to God, he will not go to the church. Prophet Nathan and other prophets will go to him and talk to him. When you read uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1, verse 7, verse 3, you read the whole verse chapter 12, you will see when Prophet Nathan came to David and said, you have sinned against the Lord. You have taken the wife of Uriah. You have killed this him. And because of that now, God has... has, has, has God is, is, is angry with you. Amen. So David himself, he will need to talk to God through a medium. He's a king. He's not a priest. He's not a judge. Maybe let me show you a better, a better one. Matthew chapter 12. Jesus Christ is, is the one himself talking. Matthew chapter 12 verse 3 and 4. Matthew chapter 12 verse 3 and 4. Three Paul says, but he said unto them, have you not read what David did when he was angry and they that were with him, how that he went into the house of God and did eat meat and did eat the true bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them that were with him, but only for the priests. So where, you remember that David was a warrior. So during the time of war, he was very angry and he stood before the house of the Lord. The truth is, it was not lawful for David and his, his men of war to enter the house of the Lord to eat bread that belongs to only the priests. But he found grace. He cried to the Lord and he found grace before God. And he, he entered, he tipped toad in the house of the Lord and took bread. And they came out and they ate it because they were very angry. That was how God was going to bring grace through Christ so that the church, anyone can now enter the church. But before Christ died, nobody else would, would enter the church. David was, was not allowed to enter the church. So that means David did not introduce music in the church. He introduced music in the temple. Hallelujah. But when he became king, praise the living God. When he became king, again, the same David. When he became king in 2 Chronicles 26. We are reading Old Testament a lot. Second Chronicles 26. When he became king, he started assigning people. You read the whole Second Chronicles 26. You will see the assignment of King David. He also assigned those who are going to be playing instruments in the house of the Lord. But remember, they can give you assignment to play in the house of the Lord. Which house you are not supposed to enter? He also assigned commanders of the army. He assigned people who go to give him, give, him, give him advice. He assigned different roles as King David was doing them. But among his assignment, because he was a servant of God who loved to play instruments, so he also made people who play like him, people who are playing music instruments. He also assigned them that in case you will be allowed to enter the church, please, you go and your work is to do this. He assigned them like that. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Now, my question is, what about the church now? Because David never introduced music in the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. Why are people singing? Why are people why are people brought speakers in the house of the Lord? Why are people jumping, praising God, singing, just doing those things? Why are music? Right now, if you don't have a music system in your church, except you are not a Catholic and Muslim, your church, if you're born again, your church, you will never get full. People are moved by radios. People are moved by dancing. And once there are people, if they don't dance, they will say the service was not nice. Any type of praise, every praise, every celebration, every dancing, every jumping, every happiness that were done in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament were not done in the church. If you are listening to me now, and you want to prove me wrong, I am ready to resign as a man of God. If you find anywhere that people are dancing inside the church. Remember David who is writing Psalms. And in the book of Psalms he's saying, let everybody dance in the sanctuary. He himself never introduced a music system and dancing in the church. He himself also did not enter the, the sanctuary, the church. Hallelujah. So it will now it were never done in the church. Before even David was, a, was a, alive, people were already dancing before the Lord. In fact, it at the Red Sea. Amen. At the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 15, verse 20. You see the first person who are dancing who danced before the Lord is Miriam. Miriam is a sister of Moses. Miriam is a sister of Aaron. Exodus 15, 20 says, And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel. Timbrel is a, is a music instrument in her hand. And all the women went up, up, out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, saying, Sing ye to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The also of an righteous had he thrown into the sea. Amen. So here Moses, I, I, I mean, the Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron, and the women, they were dancing before the Lord because God has saved them from the Red Sea. When he's saying the horses, amen, and the horsemen, they drowned in the water. God has tried, the horse and the riders were, had been thrown into the sea. It's because Pharaoh is, is saying Pharaoh and his horsemen, all of them were consumed in the Red Sea. So what did they do? They celebrated God. By dancing, by enjoy, by enjoyment, by bringing reduce, by bringing timbers, by bringing everything to appreciate God for what God has done for them. So, like I told you, music is a way of appreciating God. It's a way of showing happiness. Amen. Hallelujah. What God has done in their life. You see, not long eh, when when you see not 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 long from that place. In Exodus 32, verse 19, verse 19, the children of Israel again went to dance to another God. That's why I told you dancing and, and music, it, it, it can be done to anyone else. They went to, in, verse, in chapter 32, Exodus 32, verse 19, and it came to pass, as, as soon as he came near unto the camp, that he saw the calf. And the dancing, and Moses was uh, Moses' anger was hot, and I cast the ta the tablets, the tables out of his hand, and break them, with the mount. Amen. And he took the calf, the calf. So people made when Moses was in the mountain of God, Mount Sinai, talking to God, getting the Ten Commandments. People people commanded Aaron that they make for them a god, a golden calf, so that it can be their god. And this is what made the golden calf. And they started dancing, they started play, playing music. And Moses, God was very angry with the children of Israel. So you can see that the people were dancing outside. After the Red Sea, there was no church. So the dancing was outside. Even this one, Moses was coming from the mountain. People were dancing to another God, to the calf, the golden calf, outside. Now, that place that people used to dance before the Lord, to dance inside the church, is also here. Let's see it. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. Amen. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14.
Amen. Ah, verse 14, it says, And David danced before the Lord, and all his might, with all his might, and David was guided with a, with a linen ephod. Now, remember, dancing before the Lord is different from dancing in the house of the Lord. Because everything you do, whether you're stealing, or you're dancing, or you're jumping, or you're doing this, it is before the Lord. Because the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the whole earth. He's seeing everything. Verse 15. So, uh, so David and all his house, so all the house of Israel brought, brought up the act of the Lord with shouting and with sound of trumpets. So they brought the act of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of trumpets. Verse 16. And the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. Michal, or Michael, Saul's daughter, who was the wife of David, he looked through a window and saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place, in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle, that David had preached for it. And David offered him. So listen, David was bringing the act of the Lord from the enemy's camp. He was bringing it from, to bring it to the temple, I mean to the palace. Praise the living God. So when you see, amen, you see, amen, the David, in verse 16, as David was appearing, he says, as the act of the Lord came into the city of David. What is the city of David? Bethlehem. Not in the house of the Lord. So when the ark was entering the city of David, and the city of David, his wife has to be there. So the wife saw him dancing, and the dancing style to the wife was not right for a king. So you, the old king, how do you dance like this among children? No. So that's what she put in her mind. Amen. And God was not happy because God does not have, has no problem with dancing outside the sanctuary. With music outside the sanctuary, God has no problem with it. And then you see, so that dancing also that David does, the one that David did, that people are using them today, that David danced and his clothes were torn and the wife got trouble because he was stopping him. It was not inside the church. Hallelujah. It was never inside. It was, if you read the ending of that verse, it says, the return of the act of God, the act of the covenant. It was not inside the church. Inside the church of Old Testament, you don't make mistake. Mistake, you die. Any mistake, you die. God was a very jealous God at that time. Amen. So that's what I want you to understand. That all this dancing that, that, that David wrote in dancing, clapping hands, enjoyment, shouting, doing this in the book of Psalms, praise the living God. All of them were outside the church. They were not, there were celebrations. For example, at the wedding of Canaan, Jesus was available. It was not inside church. There was dancing. There was drinking. Hallelujah. When the prodigal son returned, the Bible says that the father killed a fat cow. And when the other son, who was not a prodigal, he was coming back, he heard the noise of dancing. And he was very, he came and said, what is that dancing? Then they say, your brother is coming, he's back. It was outside. It was not the dancing of the sanctuary. It was not the dancing of the church. Hallelujah. So as far as I know, there is no word gospel music in the scripture. This word is introduced by man because it is a word that is used to make music, to make money. It is a word that is used for money. The word gospel music is not inside the Bible. If you find it, I give you 10 million and I resign. The word special numbers is also not there. <laughs> special numbers are not in the scriptures. Hallelujah. They are not in the scriptures. That also, there are words that are, in, that are introduced by the people of this world. Let's check another one. In the church of God, you say, Paul and Silas sang praises. Let, let me show you that one. It's better also to see. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts 16, 25. In Paul and Silas sang praises. Now listen. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. People don't really see the word prayed. Can you underline that word prayed? Underline that word prayed. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Then they said after their prayers, they sang praises unto the Lord God. And the prisoners heard them. Verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all doors were opened, and everyone's bound were loosed. 
Hallelujah. The que question I'm asking you now, was the singing, the praise that they sang, was it the one that made the, the prison, they made shake the prison, the foundation of the prison house? Was it the one that broke the chain? Was it the one that opened the door? No. It is prayer. Because the Bible says that if the violent only take it, taken it by force. I know at midnight, that's the time of the best time of prayer. Paul and Silas arose and said, every chain upon my neck, I might lay my neck, my hand by the power in the blood of Jesus. I command you to break by fire, break by fire, break by fire. I command every doors of prison to open, open supernaturally. Let my angels arrive and fight for me in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what they were doing. That is the first thing they did. Then when they are finished doing it, I know that the praise they sang was not dancing, it was not clapping, it was not enjoyment, it was not shouting, it was not what we do in the church today. It was a small one. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Because that's a praise. Thank you, my Lord. There was no radio. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Their hands were tight. How do you dance? How do we jump? When their, their arms were tied, the chain were on their arms, they're on their legs, on everywhere that they're having, they were, they were tied. So now you, as a believer, can you find out which praise they praise? Then you introduce that praise. No, whether you like it or not, there must be a change. Somebody must bring change in this Pentecostal that we are doing today. Because the Pentecostals are full of what is called uh, mediocre, or what I call Pentecostal madness. The first one is speaking in tongues. <laughs> that is mediocre and madness. Because Paul said, if you don't know what you're talking, keep quiet. You make new believers to, be, to think you're useless and nonsense. And people are learning how to speak in tongues, saying there's power in it. And when the tongues that were spoken in the day of Pentecost were human language that were understood. But these ones are not understood. We have this in the YouTube. You can also upload, you can go and, go and like our YouTube and read it and listen to them. They are there. The true tongue that God speaks, that God wants us to speak. Amen? So there must be somebody who is going to introduce change in this Pentecostalism that we are having today before Jesus comes back. So which praise did Paul and Silas sing in prison? You understand that praise, then you bring it out. That is the praise that God, God loves. It is not music instrument that if we don't have today, we cannot dance. People today, we don't have radio music machines. We don't have keyboard. We don't have guitar. We don't have drums. I tell you something. After the service, people will tell you the service was too cold. Today, the keyboard was a player was very bad. It was not good enough. Today, the song was not nice. It is because of the music. It's not because of the melody, the meaning of the song. Hallelujah. In praise and living God. That's what people don't know. That's why people don't understand. Hallelujah. Amen. So, that is what the experience of Paul. It is not the music. It is not the, the dancing. It is not the song they sang. The, the song they sang was the appreciation of God for answered prayer. But it is the power of the prayer that released him from that prison. And in Silas. Even Peter, when he was in prison, it is not that the people, the Bible said, the child prayed without ceasing and the angel went and delivered him. So it is prayer that can break chain. It is prayer that can shake foundation. It is prayer that can open door. It is not jumping. Some people say, me, if I jump and I praise God and I do everything, I come and bring music. You put for me this song. Put for me that music. Put for me this one for this artist. I love the other one. This is what makes me happy. Give me happiness. This is what excites my soul. You have demons in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, this is what we, the Bible is telling us very well. So, now, slowly, slowly, music started entering in the church. Amen. Music started entering in the church. Slowly, slowly. But then God said something about music. Let's see in the book of what? In the book of Amos. Hallelujah. In the book of Amos. 
Amen. In the book of Amos. Uh, let's read Amos chapter 5 verse 23. Let me look for it. Amos chapter 5 verse 23. God was now angry because while as music started entering slowly, slowly in the church, people started introducing small, small things. Started by clapping hands. Then they started by shaking their waist. Then they started by dancing. Before now, it is these days it is real madness now. Every style from disco hall is in the church. Before it came, God already warned people in Amos chapter 5, verse 23. It says, Take away from me the noise of your song, for I will not hear the melody of your voice, or the melody of your idols, or the melody of your instrument. Then it says, But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as a stream. Praise the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. So God now warned the children of Israel, say, I do not take enjoyment. I don't enjoy. Amen. The sound of your music. Amen. That's what God is saying. Hallelujah. That's what God is saying. Amen. Let me show you another one. That's what God is saying. So take away from me the sound of that word, the sound of you, that they say the, the, the noise of your song. By the way, the music system we have in the church, it is too noisy that you I tell you, most pastors, including me, after 30 years of serving God, you will end up being deaf because noise has destroyed your ears, your eardrums. That after the service, you hear everything. We as if you are what? Oh, everybody, noise is too much. God wants the melody of our song. God wants the meaning of the song. People are not dancing the song. They are dancing the keyboard. They are dancing the tune. They are dancing how nice it is. And there are many people who have been dancing the song they don't understand. Pepele, pepele, oh. Pe, pe, le. What is the meaning of that? From Congo. Is it a, a song that they're using to worship a God in Congo? We don't know. What is that song? People are bringing them in the house of the Lord. We don't know the meaning. I don't know. Maybe it has a good meaning. Me, I don't know. But what I tell you is that people hear anything and they just carry it and bring it to the house of the Lord. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, we had this the other time. Colossians chapter, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. He says, let the word of God, I'm reading from here, it says, 3.16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, giving, singing with the grace in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. So now he's saying, let the word, the scriptures, the word of Christ dwell inside you richly. And let that same word be introduced in the teaching and the song that you see. A song is supposed to be a teaching. Not the, how nice the sound of the keyboard is. No, the meaning of the song is what God is after. And as you are dancing, you must reflect on the meaning. As you are jumping, you must reflect on the meaning. It's not the sound. It's not the noise. The noise. Every song that is sung, you know the Catholic, they sing hymns. So every song that is sung by Catholics, they are having scripture. They have scriptural basis. They sing everything. In fact, Catholics have the best songs. Not only that, they don't follow the song that they, they sing. They do the, the contrary, but they sing the right songs. Amen. So the song that we sing, that God desires from us, should have the word of Christ richly in it. In it. Amen. The word of Christ must be richly in it. Praise the living God. Amen. Jesus Christ, when he was on this earth, what happened in Matthew chapter 26, verse 30? Matthew chapter 26, verse 30. Amen. Matthew 26, verse 30. Jesus also, the earth, the time of Jesus Christ. You know the reason why Jesus was so... 26 verse 30. I'm supposed to end 
But you know, there are so many things I was supposed to share. So I'm going to divide the lesson into two. This is part one. I may not finish everything because you know. And when Jesus, Jesus 26, verse 30. I'm reading from 28. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the, that day when I drink it new with you in my father's house, in my father's kingdom. But started, and when they had sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Il Olive. What is an hymn? Songs that have scriptural basis, strong songs that flows in the soul. Songs that you have a reflection, they, you reflect the meaning. Songs that have no dancing, songs that have no system. I surrender all to Jesus. I surrender. You close your eyes as you sing them. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. That was the song that Jesus was singing with his disciples. Jesus did not have radio. Children of God, there was no radio. If he can turn water into wine, he can multiply the bread and the fish. He could have also introduced radio. Say, bring radio. Let there be radio and there will be radio. He could walk in the water. He could have done that. Or maybe we'll say, let's, let's have some praise. Then you, hallelujah, they will clap and jump. They didn't have that time. They had time for the word. They had time for prayer. Amen. So Jesus himself, he did not have what? He did not have time for this all this music nonsense. All this uh, jumping, jumping, and uh, kalulu and orelation. No, he did not have that time. In Acts of the Apostles, Apostle chapter 6, Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, Peter and the rest of the Apostles, chapter 6, verse 4. I'm going to show you something. There was confusion in the church, and Peter said something which I love so much. He says, Wherefore, brethren, verse 4, uh, verse 3 and 4, Wherefore, brethren, look ye among us seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continu continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So as servants of God, our work is just two, the ministry of the word of God and prayer. But check our churches today. They will do praise with radio, two hours. Worship, ten minutes. Word of God, people are sleeping. Prayer, zero. And you want to go to heaven. I know the disciples, the Peters, they are watching over us from heaven and they say, look at this mumu. Look at these stupid people. The church is powerful, powerless. People are faking miracles. Pastors are very poor. Churches can never be built. 20 years, they, are, they can't even put one pole. But they can't make bricks. Born again are jumping with poverty everywhere. Dirty clothes, one shoe, no phones, nothing, no marriage, no wedding, no anything. What is happening? There is no prayer. There is no word. There is dancing, there is jumping, there is shouting, there is tongue. We have to be a different brand of born again. Those who know their God and they can do exploit. Those who don't take pleasure in any other thing besides the word of God and prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. If Jesus come to the church of today, he will beat people. <laughs> Amen. He will beat people seriously. Because in Matthew, in Luke 19, 46, Jesus beat people seriously. Not real beating. He destroyed their property. Not real beating anyway. But I call it beating people. In Luke chapter 19, verse 41, verse 46. Verse 46. Amen. I love this. Amen. Uh -huh. Verse 45, it says, And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought. Those who were buying and selling the house of the Lord, in the house of the Lord, Jesus started casting them out. And today, even in our churches, we are buying and selling. You hear somebody, you hear somebody saying, they have brought a broom, but we, we don't know where to keep it. We are going to change it with money. This is what was happening. Uh -huh. A 1,000, 
Somebody will say 2,000. Yes, 2,000 is going. 1, 2, 3, 2,000 is going. 3, somebody will say 2, 5. Somebody, yes, 2, 5. 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 2, somebody say 3,000. Then they will sell it to the one with 3,000. That is buying and selling. It's happening in our churches today. If they bring brooms, why, do you, why can't you keep it? And use it for sweeping the church. If they bring food, maybe posture, they bring it more posture, they bring beans, take it to the pastor's home. If they bring any other thing, take it for the use. Whatever you don't like, give to the poor within the church. Give the money. Amen. Then those who are selling and buying in verse 46, he said unto them, Is it not written? Is it not written? My house shall be called a, called a house of prayer. But you have turned them into dens of thieves. Who is a thief? The devil cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So in other words, this place is saying, You have made my house to become the den of the devils. Now, when we come to the Lord, bring radio, bring system, bring this, begin to jump, look, our, our, look at our dressing. Only the devil you see. Look at the style we're doing. Only the devil you can see. Look at the type of every song we're singing. You see demons only. It is we have made the church to be those who are demon possessed, those who are having those who are having anger, those who have not forgiven people, they are full in the church, jumping and praising. And the time of jumping and praising, you will never see them. You will never see them crying to the Lord. You will never say they can enjoy it. Amen. So if Jesus is supposed to be here today, the way we have, we have used the red use in our churches, the way we have introduced the Dombolo Yesu today, I tell you something, Jesus would beat people, will beat people seriously, a lot of people. Because people are not now using their, they are not using the music, they are not using the meaning of the word or what they see. Hallelujah. Prayer is zero. No intercession. Word of God, people are sleeping. It's also not strong enough. And people are good at defending. I know you're going to defend this message. But if you come for the if you come on the ground here and we teach you from here with evidence and everything, you will see that what we are teaching is the right thing. People who are important in this world, I tell you, born again are full of the, the, the richest people are having bicycles. If a pastor is having a motorcycle or he's having a car, he's a thief. Or those who have left the Lord a long time and they're now faking miracles, they're using prophecy to gain money, they're stealing people. Hallelujah. In Kampala, the big, big churches. Or maybe those who are not making money from offering the Joyce Meyer. But somebody who is only trusting in the Lord and has, is not putting prayer, number one, is not putting the word of God, number two, those two, and has put praise and worship and a testimony and announcement and uh, all those who have to be in the forefront. Special numbers. <laughs> that church will never grow spiritually, financially, even morally. It can never grow. Because Satan will hide within the choir. Amen. Will hide within the choir. And you see most people, everybody who's coming to pray in born again, they are women. Very few men are there. We are going to have a women, men, men, they are, are pastors and servants of God. Hallelujah. The men who are there are pastors and servants of God. Hallelujah. So, you will never see great men, people with vehicles, people, I mean, the politicians, this and that, coming to, to pray with born again. Because even the way they dance is, is so shameful, is so ungodly, is so satanic. And some of them even allow people to go dance up there in the altar, which is not love. It's not right because altar is the holy place. It's a place where we meet God. It's a place where a pastor alone is the one to stand there. That's why, that's why born again, they are like that. God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's read one verse and close. 
in heaven. Let's see what happened in heaven. Angels of God are singing in heaven. Let's see their song. Revelation chapter 7, verse 13. Revelation chapter 7, verse 13. The angels of God in heaven. In 7, verse 13, it says, 7, verse 13. Let me read verse 12, verse 11. Verse 11, and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto the Lord our God forever and ever. Amen. The praise in heaven, the worship in heaven are done when people are falling down and their faces are on the ground. Hallelujah. Not the Alleluia. Alle, alleluia. Amen. No. Not like that. And the songs are singing there. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Songs that have meaning. Songs that can make God pleased. The angels of God, they, they, will, they will sing to God. But all they know is they worship God. When, God, when Jesus said, the time has come, and it is now that true worshippers will worship me in spirit and truth. That means there is a spirit in worship. But the, the worship that have spirit have been given one minute and two, five minutes on them. But the praise that have demonic spirit, the praise that everybody can praise, irrespective of whether they have been sinning or not, the, that one has been given two hours. See how the devil has deceived the whole one. So the spirit in worship, that when you see somebody is worshiping and that person is crying, that person is falling, that person is, 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 is rolling before the Lord in tears, that is what God desires from us. So we're going to learn more about this. We are even going to go as far as going to see the music of the world and how that the devil is using them. Amen. We are going to see the music in this world and see how the devil is using the worldly music, the earthly music, how that, that they are tattooing themselves, how they are, they, are, they are having homosexuals gathering themselves, doing this. The devil is using them to now bring them to the church. What I desire for you is that you be strong in the word of God. What I desire for you is that you be, be strong in prayer. So that you can do exploit. Look at me. The people who saw you coming to become born again, especially your family members, they are waiting to see what God can do in your family. You'll be dancing. You'll be jumping. Be, be shouting. 20 years, not, nothing will be done in your life. 